17, we are going to talk about some friends who had a skin problem, much like mine. Now, leprosy was a um, more common disease back in the time of the New Testament. We have cures for it today. It's also called Hansen's disease. Um, it's caused by a bacteria that starts with just little sores that maybe don't even hurt on your body, and then eventually it uh, breaks out all over, and then parts of you start to fall off like your fingers and your earlobes, um, because it just keeps spreading. And in the Old Testament, God taught the Israelites how to um, take care of themselves when they had skin infections so that they didn't make other people sick, so they weren't contagious and didn't spread it around. And so if you had leprosy in the Bible times, you would have to leave your family, your job, your home, your life, and go live outside of the city with people who had infections and diseases and things that couldn't be cured so that you wouldn't make other people sick. So if you came down with something like this, which in real life, it's not pretty and polka dotty like this, it's awful, your life would be over. You would miss your family, you would miss your job, you would miss dreams of what you wanted to be someday, have to give it all up and go live basically alone outside of the city, the camp. Um, and so it was a really hard and bad thing when this happened. Now, one day in the Bible, in Luke chapter 17, it tells us, now Luke is a gospel, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So those are the books of the Bible where we have stories of when Jesus lived on the earth. So Jesus is traveling. It says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. So he was between cities. So he was in the area where some people might have lived outside of cities who might have had diseases. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. That means do something for us, feel sorry for us, have pity, help us. Now, the reason they had to stand far away and call, Jesus, help us, <laughs> like a megaphone, this is not a megaphone, um, is because when you had leprosy, it was so contagious that the law said you couldn't even come close to people. You couldn't hug anybody. You couldn't get close at all. And so you'd have to stand far away and say, I'm unclean. I have leprosy. Stay back, which would feel terrible, wouldn't it? Um, and so these people from a distance holler at Jesus, Jesus, help us. And when he saw them, Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priest. Now, the priest, friends, back then would have been the one who could declare them healed or clean or safe to go back into their family and live in their home again. So Jesus is telling them to go show themselves to the priest. That's all it says. He says, go show yourself to the priest. And so they went. As they went, they were cleansed. So while they're on their way to go see the priest, they leave Jesus, they get healed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, don't you think you would notice if like all of a sudden you had these spots that had always been on your body and were hurting and festering and falling apart and then all of a sudden they were just gone, all of them? I don't even know where mine are, so I can't get rid of them all. But one guy, certainly they noticed and they would have felt happy. And this one guy, it says, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God. In a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, weren't all 10 of you cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? He said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. All right, friends, there's a whole lot of stuff in that passage that we can unpack. But the main thing that we want to talk about today is, you know, none of the 10 of them knew at that moment. They, they believed Jesus could heal them or they wouldn't have been hollering at him. But they didn't know in that moment when Jesus said, go to the priest, that they were healed. They noticed it on the way. And as they noticed it, you know, Jesus had said, go show the priest. One of them took the time 
to turn around and go back and say, Jesus, thank you. Praise God for making me well. Um, thank you. And show gratitude. And friends, this month, as we talk about gratitude and showing gratitude, giving thanks, we want to remember how important it is, is for us to say thank you. So just like the one man who remembered to turn around and thank Jesus, um, we need to remember even if we have gratitude in our hearts and we're really thankful to God, it's important for us to say thank you to the people around us and to God and to give God glory with our mouths and praise. Um, and so um, we want to think about saying thank you as kind of like giving a shout out to God. Do you guys ever have at school where the principal or the teacher or somebody or your youth minister might give a shout out to somebody? Sometimes um, one of Avery's teachers last year would give a shout out to kids who made like a perfect score on the test. And it was always really cool to get the shout out. So it's like giving praise and giving credit. And so that's what we want to do to show our gratitude. We want to say thank you to the, to the um, person that we owe the most gratitude to, which is God, right? And we also, because we love God, we want to be grateful and thankful to those around us who bless us as well. Um, I want to leave you with our memory verse and then one real fun um, minute to win it Thanksgiving game you can play with your family this week. Our memory verse this month comes from Psalm 107, verse 1. It's very easy, and it'll help us remember to give the shout out to God to say thanks this month for um, the things that we're grateful for. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Psalm 107, verse 1. Now, at home, you can take um, a big piece of paper on the table um, with all of your family, and everybody has something to write with. And, you know, the minute to win it games, you just want to set a timer for like a minute. And on this one, you just want to see how many different ways you can write thank you in a minute and see who can do it the most. So um, you can write it in different languages. You can write it in different fonts. You could write it vertical, horizontal, backwards, forwards. You can write it um, any way you can think of. So um, just one minute. Thanks as many ways as you can. Um, and let us know who wins and how much fun you have with some minute to win at Thanksgiving. Have a great time this week with your families, friends. I'm thankful for you. Bye.